Welcome to the uh, Glenn Beck program, and we say hello now to Dallas Alexander. He is a retired Canadian Special Forces sniper. He actually holds the record for the longest uh, kill, and that is at 2.1 miles, uh, which is remarkable. Just the amount of math involved in that just hurts my head. Uh, Dallas, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me. You bet. So you have said uh, some pretty controversial things, and I, I, I wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth because you do have experience in this. You don't believe that this was just incompetence on the Secret Service's side? Yeah, that's right. Can you make the case? Yeah, I think... Uh... Like you said, I have I have some experience. Um, I, I did that job for a long time, close protection and and protecting VIPs and stuff up to <clears throat> up to and including our prime minister in Canada was part of my job. Um, and I think looking at the situation yesterday um, or the day before, rather, the any any amount of tactical professional. I mean, you know, I've seen the videos and there was. I don't know how many on the ground from, from, you know, police and secret service. And there was just, there was a, too many people there to not have the most obvious position covered. Like you, I said this before children who play call of duty or go to paintball would know that that roof is the most important position. And that building is one of the most important buildings to secure period. Like it, it, just, not picking that up is impossible. It seems impossible to me, um, but you know sometimes the impossible happens just through sheer incompetence. Um, what? What? So, what are you um, in in your world where you are? You're just war gaming this. Um, I think it's important for people to know there's no evidence of anything yet except questions. And what the question Dallas just brought up is. 100 percent uh valid and needs to be answered to uh, w- satisfactorily uh, satisfactory um uh we we have to know why they weren't watching that if they weren't so what do you think would have happened uh, well i think that <clears throat> and this is what i said on a video yesterday is that and this isn't me pointing a finger at anyone in particular or a party or an agency but someone within, like, the inside, quote-unquote, had to have helped with this. Like, you, you can't walk through layers of security like that and then climb up a ladder to the most obvious shooting position and take a shot at, you know, the former president and, and maybe future president. Like, there's somewhere, somewhere along that chain, like, you know, I think there's talk of coming out that he had a van and there was explosives and... So, like, details are going to be crazy for a little while. But just from that to having the shots happen, there there had to be someone that helped with that. Um, And Well, Dallas, they did say that um, this was not part of the... not part of the secure location. This was an adjacent property, so he didn't have to go through security uh, to get the rifle there. But again, you would have been, if you're a Secret Service, you would have been at least, if you're not covering that building with bodies uh, and somebody up on there, you would at least be covering it with eyesight, would you not? Yeah, absolutely, and especially with a covered approach like that, being the, the building sloping away from, you know, the other sniper team or whatever they could see it, mm-hmm. it would be covered. Like, <clears throat> I saw that just by, on a, like, it flashed on the screen at a restaurant I was out, and immediately, I'm like, the, the, the two most obvious things, that building and then the water tower in the background. <clears throat> and you don't need any special training for that, and yet there was a bunch of people there with special training and presumably leading up to it in days before. Hey, Dallas, uh, my name is Jason Buttrell. I'm a Glenn's head writer and chief researcher. Can you explain from the sniper's perspective, especially in a situation like this in close protection details, uh, upon visual acquisition of an enemy sniper, does the counter sniper have permission to immediately 
take action and fire? Or do they have to go through like a long process of verifying and then getting permission and all that? Yeah, so I, I, that very much depends on the department, what the ROEs are. And I, like, I can't speak to the Secret Service when they're working with a police force. I have no idea. Um, I know in the jobs that I have done, if there is a sniper position and I'm a counter sniper, sniper overwatch, yeah, you're shooting. You're not waiting for someone to give you permission to shoot. Can I ask, as a, as a sniper overwatch, do you also, mm -hmm. are, you, are you focused on a specific pause or are you kind of scanning the entire horizon? Yeah, it, so, it sort of depends on the mission and how many other sniper teams there are. So if, if you have a bunch of teams, you'll have areas of responsibility. Um, you, if you are you know, tasked with watching one specific doorway or something, then that's where you stay. So mission, it's mission dependent. Right. So Dallas, let me ask you, there, there was a five mile an hour wind. This is, you know, it looks like by the grace of God, uh, Donald Trump turned mm -hmm. his head. Uh, yeah. A, how easy of a shot was this for a 20 something? Uh, and uh, how close did we come to losing a president? Yeah, that's something I've been thinking about, you know, for the last couple of days. It's it's, it's crazy because if it would have been just, you know, an inch or two the other way, uh, I would, I just hate to think about what would have happened, you know, in this country, in the whole world, it would have been very crazy. Um, but the shot, you know, I, I was asking somebody about this yesterday. I haven't got confirmation on what the optics on the rifle were, which makes a big difference. Um, it's not generally a very hard shot. I think it was 150 yards, roughly. Um, it doesn't take much shooting training whatsoever to be able to hit a, a head-sized target at 150 yards. <clears throat> um, wind definitely would play a factor. I think I think the caliber was 5.56. Five, Even that, I'm not 100 percent sure. But uh, it's it's not a it's not a difficult shot. But it's also not unmissable. You know, if he only has a, an EOTech sight or something like that, like and you don't have a lot of gun training, it's not something that you're for sure going to hit, which is maybe why he sent, I think it was five or eight rounds. Have you ever, have you ever shot and had them dead in your sights and they moved at the very last minute like this? How often does that happen? Oh, from that range, like, that, that's pretty wild. I, I think <clears throat> I was very surprised. Um, I think... Someone telling me yesterday that they heard it was an EOTech sight made a little more sense to me because if they had a scoped rifle, you know, with any magnification, 10 power or whatever, it, yeah. it would have been very, a different shot, a lot easier to make. So, um, Dallas, thanks for your, uh, your uh, weighing in on this. I, I, I really hope that you're wrong. Uh, what are the questions that we should be demanding from our Secret <clears throat> Service? Oh, the, oh, geez, the breakdown is crazy. Like, there's so many layers to this, and and it would be I, I don't even know who who started the planning, how long ago it was, but to miss something that obvious, um, again, I there's just I don't think there's an explanation. I think it just needs a deep dive investigation. I don't think competence, and I've worked in the government for a long time, so I know comp incompetence, and there's a ton of it. Um, I just don't think that that is what explains this problem away. I think something happened, and I think there needs to be, you know, a gigantic deep dive investigation because it's very, very shady. So you don't think that even incompetence would cover this because it's so obvious? <laughs> Yeah, like I think I, you could take a 10-year-old out there and say, okay, we want to plan security. What should we look at? And if he, it'll be a kid who played Call of Duty. He's going to tell you this rooftop right here is the most dangerous point. It's overlooking where the president's going to be speaking or the former president's going to be speaking. It's just, it's cliche. It's, it's so obvious. Those snipers, it will be that and the water tower. Um, but, but it couldn't be just one person if that was happening. It would in, it would have to involve a team, wouldn't it? Because you, somebody else on the team would go, Bill, what the hell are you talking about? We got to cover the roof. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. So I'm saying in all these videos, whether it's Secret Service agents or local police or whatever it is, these are all tactical professionals. And even if their their level of com- competence is low, it still doesn't matter. It's so that's such an obvious basic thing. Like you could take a you know a Navy cook or whatever, and he's going to oh yeah, tactically speaking, we got to look at that thing. So out of all the people on the ground, all the people involved, it just doesn't make any sense that that one position and the most important position arguably was just not being watched and then like a ladder someone could put up a ladder and climb up it doesn't make any sense well apparently the ladder was attached to the building so nobody had to bring a ladder or or lift it up um let me uh let me ask you um the thing that bothers me is that all of the people on the ground were pointing and shouting shooter 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 um is it possible that nobody heard that, that it didn't get up, you know, to the, uh, to the guys? I mean, if you're a police officer or you're in Secret Service, wouldn't you radio that in immediately? Yeah, you would hope. I mean, this is the part of it that I, I think could be, um, you could point to incompetence. I've seen communication break down when things get crazy. Uh, radios not work. Like I'm guessing all the agencies there, whoever local police and secret service, they're probably not using the same radio and gear. And there's probably someone passing along the message in chaotic times. I've seen communication be uh, poorly executed to like a, a surprising level. So that, that part I could almost, I could almost wrap my head around it being blamed on incompetence, but I just think everything leading up to there being, a guy with a gun yeah. on a roof within essentially zeroing range of a rifle to the president. To me, that doesn't add up whatsoever. And they would have recorded everything that was said, would they not? Um, I don't know what the SOPs are actually like for, for secret service and police. Um, the missions I've gone on, unless it was going to like a tactical center or something, like on the ground, we were not recording our radio conversations. Mm. Okay. Um, thank no, you I, so I, much. I, I appreciate it. No, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for pointing this out and giving us questions that really need to be answered. Uh, Dallas Al- Alexander, appreciate it. God bless. Stay safe. Thanks for having me.